And now, as promised, the man who lives in his own golden tower in New York City. For that matter, he could live just about anywhere in the Western Hemisphere because he has developed magnificent tracts of land and owns the gleaming casinos and hotels which are on top of them. We could only be talking about Donald Trump. Thank you, Mr. Trump, for joining us this morning. Hiya, Dan. I have heard that you are worth something like three billion dollars, but to read your book, The Art of the Deal, uh, you don't care to count exactly how much you're worth, do you? Well, I don't know what I'm worth. I know that, that from the standpoint of the book, I've done a book, the charities go to, uh, the, the money all goes to charity that we're making from the book. The book has become a tremendous success, which I'm happy to say, and it's something that makes a lot of charities very happy, too, because, as I said, the money goes to charity, so I'm very happy about it. It tells you that a lot of people want to make a lot of money. Are they going to learn that by reading uh, your book? Well, they might learn that, and they also might learn that they shouldn't try making too much money because I really have a theory that some people are not destined to make a lot of money, and that's fine, and they can be very happy. In fact, they can be much happier by not. Those people shouldn't be because they'll ruin their lives. I mean, they'll go and they'll, they'll put up their, their house and they'll mortgage their cars and everything else they own, and they'll go into business, and they shouldn't necessarily be in business. Not everybody is meant to be a business person. Now, you own these incredible casinos and hotels. Oh, and the towers in New York City are going to build this uh, world's tallest building now in Television City. When is enough enough? Or, or will Donald Trump never be satisfied with the, the deal making and the acquisitions? Well, I'm like a lot of my friends from Houston. I just keep chugging. I mean, all you can do is just keep going. Life is, uh, is sort of a pretty short experience. And you have to maintain some kind of an equilibrium. And, and the way I maintain that is to work. And I enjoy what I do. I love what I do, and I hope I do it well, and so I just keep going forward, Dan, and it's, uh, so far it's paid off. Are you smarter than most people who would call themselves entrepreneurs? Do you work harder? What, what is the deal with you, anyway? Well, that's an interesting question. I don't know if anyone's ever asked me the question, am I smarter than other people? I think that without a certain innate intelligence and without a certain drive, you're not going to be successful. I'll bet that you're used as a person an awful lot. I know that people sue you because you have deep pockets. People invite you to their banquets to promote their own causes. And in a more personal way, I suppose that people come up to Donald Trump and to them, money is your complete identity. And they don't approach you with the kind of uh, personal respect that I'm sure you deserve. Uh, th that must uh, aggravate you, must bother you. Well, it becomes a somewhat impersonal life, unfortunately, and I will tell you that I'm not sure that that's a very good thing or a very healthy thing, but it's where I am, and there's not, unfortunately, very much I can do about it, but maybe I wouldn't want to. I have my friends, I have some very, very good friends, and I guess I have some very good enemies, and I like it that way somehow, and, and I really believe in, in trashing your enemies and, and really being loyal to your friends. I'm a strong believer in loyalty, Dan. I keep wondering about little details of your life. Are you, are you carrying your wallet this morning? I am carrying my wallet. How much wallet. cash do you have in your wallet? Probably none. I don't keep cash in a wallet, and I don't carry very much cash. You know, there's not very much reason to carry cash, I guess, but I don't carry very much. But I keep none in my wallet, I, I can honestly say. I don't, your credit's I don't put probably it, I don't have pretty it. good. I guess the credit is good. Do you pump your own gas at the, at the service station? No, not generally. And, and uh, if I can, you know, it's, it's one of the nice little luxuries in life to be able to say, hey, I'll pay the extra five cents a gallon. And on, uh, say, Friday or Saturday night, do you ever sit around in your underwear and uh, order pizza, rent a movie, Absolutely. just stay at Absolutely. home? Absolutely. That's an important element in life. I mean, frankly, you're, you're mentioning one of my best and favorite fa phases in life. I love just being home, relaxing, taking it in easy, watching television, and maybe necessarily if there's pizza, that's good too. But uh, there's nothing like that kind of relaxation, Dan. In your cozy 80-foot living room. Uh, what, what doesn't money buy, anyway? Well, I, I've always said, you know, money isn't a totally essential ingredient, but it does make life a little bit easier in terms of the medical and in terms, you know, people say, well, money can't buy happiness, and they're absolutely right, but it does make it easier. Uh, it, it means that there are problems that you would have if you didn't have money uh, that you just won't have, you know, mm -hmm. to the same extent. So yeah. I, really, I really look at money as being something that is totally unessential, but something that you should certainly try and have enough of.